Is your chow chow causing havoc in your house by destroying all sorts of stuff? Well, don't worry, we have the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Chow Chow and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. If your Chow Chow is destroying all sorts of things in your house and you're kind of panicking because you don't know what to do, don't worry, as today we're gonna to be tuning into a webinar that the canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about how to deal with your dog destroying things. So in this quick fire webinar, we're gonna be talking about how I, as a canine behaviorist, help the clients that I work with, with destructive behaviors with their dogs. Whether that's destroying furniture, destroying doors, digging up carpets, any kind of destruction in the home, we're gonna address in today's webinar. So let's dive into it. And when it comes to destructive behaviors, it's a little bit different from many of the other common behaviors. As a behaviorist, if that's something that you're interested in working towards in the future, you're going to address. And that as myself, it's very different from, say, a behavior like extreme aggression or extreme reactivity, where you're there in the heat of the moment and you can implement a strategy or a, modif a behavior modification program or intervention there and then and address the issue and deal with it. Destruction tends to be an issue when people go out to work and they come home and the home is destroyed. So we have to address it in a little bit of a different way. And oftentimes it's more around the management of a behavior as opposed to being able to correct the behavior. Now, let me explain what I mean. First and foremost, we have to understand where is it that a destructive behavior comes from. Now, in my experience of losing count of the amount of cases I've helped people with this with, it tends to come from one of two places. By far, though, the most common is simply pent up frustration in terms of a lack of outlet for physical and mental stimulation requirements. What that basically means is you are not doing enough exercise with your dog. If you go out and do more exercise with your dog, give them more mental stimulation, enough that truly satisfies them every single day, depending on their breed and specific requirements for them as a dog, that will nine times out of 10 address the problem of destructive behaviors. Now, sometimes people don't want to hear that. What they want is for me as a behaviorist with the reputation that I've got to be able to come in and may wave a magic wand. They don't have to do anything for their lifestyle and I fix their broken dog. Their dog isn't broken. The dog is simply bored and frustrated. We need to give them a positive outlet for that frustration and that will address the problem. So we're going to significantly improve, increase the amount of exercise we're doing and significantly increase the amount of mental stimulation that we're giving them if you're prepared to do that nine times out of ten you're going to solve this problem now if you want to do that in more of a professional setting you're going to have to develop the people skills of being able to get that across to your clients in a way that first of all won't upset them by simply calling them out and telling them that they're the problem but helping them see that that's the case and helping them come up with a process and a program of how it is that they can quickly and efficiently be able to to provide additional exercise and mental stimulation. And that's where you can develop different strategies around quick fire ways of exercising dogs, quick fire ways of providing more mental stimulation for them. Hey guys, sorry to quickly interrupt the video. I just wanted to let you know, if you didn't know already, that my first book has come out, is now officially published and ready for you to check out if you are interested. It's called Raising and Training Perfect Puppies, The Missing Secret to Success. I think you'll find it really valuable. And if you'd like to check it out, there will be a link in the description box below. And as is always the case with any behavior case that I work on, I always help our owners restructure their relationship with their dogs and help them become a higher level canine leader when it comes to working with specific behavior problems the behavior problem that an owner will come to meet with maybe it's the problem that you're dealing with yourself maybe again you want to be considering moving into this as a profession so someone might come to you with is what we call the micro issue that is the symptom that we're seeing and that is what the owner will want addressing and that is our responsibility to help them do that here at Fenrir the reason we're able to have such large levels of success is because not only do we help them with those micro issues 
issues, but we put so much time and effort into fixing what we call the macro problem, the umbrella issue. And that is always around relationship with your dog, around the owners becoming a higher level canine leader that has a dog that will look up to them for guidance and direction. If we can achieve that, that opens up an incredible pathway of communication between themselves and the dog, which then allows us to teach them the things that we do want and the things that we don't want from them. Now, in terms of destructive behavior being the micro issue, it's one of the few behaviors where addressing that at a macro level might not necessarily be what they're looking for in the micro fix. It doesn't mean it's helpful, it's incredibly helpful. So I highly suggest that you go and do that because that will address any other possible problems that will come up in the future. So this could be an op excellent opportunity to either help yourself if you're watching this from that perspective or to help a client be able to go to that next level and that will just make ev them, them happier and their dogs happier in the the rest of their life. But when it comes to destructive behaviors in particular, because they usually happen when you're not there, the only real way that restructuring that relation helps is with anxiety. Now, like I say, destructive behaviors, vast majority of the time comes from a lack of physical and mental exercise. If it's not that and the behaviors still continue, then oftentimes it comes from a place of anxiety. The dog is stressed and anxious. That anxiety tends to come usually all of the time comes from a lack of leadership. If a dog has a calm, consistent leader in its life that it trusts implicitly, they have no reason to be anxious. Then as long as they're getting plenty of exercise, they'll happily relax and calm down. That's why we focus on those two things first. Then on top of that, or why we're going through that process, because to restructure that relationship, we use our bootcamp process. Again, if you're interested, the online version of that is down in the description box below, but we go through that process, but nothing happens overnight and that can take some time. Now, like I say, that will nine times out of a 10, even more so 99 times out of 100 will address this issue if it doesn't or why we're going through that process we simply use a methodology of managing the behavior stop setting your dog up for fail to fail to set our dogs up for success with destructive behaviors it's simply about managing the environment ensuring that there's not things in their environment that they can destroy to do that the easiest way is to crate train or pen train our dogs let me start by saying that it is not cruel whatsoever. If you get a dog and stuff it in a crate that's never been in there before, you're a poor leader, the dog is already anxious, you're not giving it enough exercise as it is, so it's already got pent up frustration, physically, mentally, and on top of that anxiety from a lack of leadership, then you leave them in there for 10 hours, then we've got a problem. But that's not necessarily the crate's fault. Again, that's a macro problem that we need to address. If you are a calm, consistent leader, providing your dog with plenty of exercise and leaving them in a crate for an appropriate amount of time three to four hours at a time before letting them out for an additional bit of exercise before going back in then there is absolutely nothing wrong with using a crate and a dog will love it dogs are denning animals i like to cover crates with a big towel or blanket to make it nice and dark put a nice bed in there so it's nice and cozy nobody else can ever go in that crate that's the dog's special safe calm place for them to go take themselves away and relax that is what we're looking at achieving and that's what we're looking at doing. To help with destructive behaviors, if we can get the dog to learn to love their crate, which is very easy if we follow that basic methodology, we leave them in there with a frozen Kong, get a Kong toy, stuff it full of some meat pate, chuck it in the freezer. Then before you go out, 10 minutes before you go out, let them sniff the Kong, put the Kong into the crate, shut the crate door so they can't get in there. And I promise you, you do that every time, your dog will be begging you to go away so that you can let them in the crate and shut them in there with that Kong. They'll look forward to that time alone. You add that on top of exercise, they go in, the Kong provides additional mental stimulation while they work their way through it. Happy days, everyone's happy. The dog then works their way through the Kong. Oh, I'm knackered now, I'm just gonna have a little sleep until the boss comes home. You come home, do a bit more exercise, Again, it's not rocket science. Add in more exercise, add in better leadership, control the environment, nothing in your house ever gets destroyed again. It's not rocket science. The theory is simple and straightforward, just requires a little bit of commitment and dedication and leadership on your part if the owner or helping your clients owners be able to implement those kind of basic strategies just with dedication and commitment to the desired outcome, which is having a perfect dog, which you will have if you put in that effort. So I hope that was helpful. Go away, get stuck in, start implementing those things. And I promise you, you're going to achieve incredible levels of success. 
And there you have it guys, some really useful tips and tricks from Will there, all about how to stop your dog destroying things. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have three dedicated videos coming out every single week, so I can't wait to see you in the next episode.